Hi everyone, my name is Filippo Rassetti and I'm going to introduce you to accretion body architecture, grasshopper class, which I'm going to give on Mill Live Academy on the 26th of November 2020. Um, some of you may know me from the other classes which I've been teaching on Live Academy. Uh, one is, is a grasshopper beginner class on superabundance fibrous tissue. There is also a one on one class on that. And the other one is karst aerobic formations, which is intermediate class, working instead on uh, aerobic formations and how uh, they look and how that visual space can be addressed. This time we move into something new, into something different. As you can see from the images, this is going to be an advanced class, and we're going to tackle more closely the brief of working on the human body. The idea would be to work on sculptural elements or wearable products that relate to the human body. Now you can see something like a mask, but we can actually work with the whole body. And we are working specifically with a kind of formation that I name accretion. So accretion is something that stands for a certain type of uh, natural process where material is being cast around it itself. And that's uh, something that I'm going to get into details in, in uh, a few minutes, but uh, these are the key ideas which I wanted to point in front of you since the very beginning of this introduction. Uh, a bit of background now. Uh, you may know, you may not know that I've been working at MOX together with Alessandro Domparelli for um, eight years now. We started working as a startup. Uh, we were working on a mass customization system for product design, products which are adapted and customized onto the human body. And you can see here like our masks, which is quite distinctive. So throughout the years, we've been working with very different type of formations, exploring how this type of formation relate in different ways to the human body. And clearly that type of research led us to develop a set of methodologies and techniques uh, computational design techniques uh, to deal with this specific type of product. So how would you represent the human body in the digital environment and how you design with that? So the collagen masks we are dealing with a certain type of fibrous tissue. So as uh, uh, the carapace mask, we're instead working with a structure which is more trabicular and deals with the human body. Here, the idea is very different. Before, it was an idea of symbiosis. Now, it's more an idea of protection onto the human body. And uh, um, like a set of shells, uh, like external balls onto the, onto the head, onto the, onto the surface of the skin. And the superabundance mask as well, working with fibers. And uh, you may know that every, every, all of this project required an understanding uh, at two levels, how to represent technically the human body, how to work with it technically, but also what works and what doesn't work with the, with the body. The, the face is a pretty sensitive part of the body since it's very easy to create association when you model something on top of that. And also there are also a set of design rules then make a product work and make other product don't work. And this is part of this development. Uh, it was not only mask, the development that we did was also with medical products, so the idea of prosthesis or orthosis, so how devices can be protected actually at the functional level. And uh, you, you know that behind that, there is quite a bit of research, understanding how the human body can be modeled in the digital environment, how a specific formation can relate to that, to that, and which can, there are also a number of techniques that uh, allow for the best integration between the two parts. This type of research, uh, I had the chance also to pursue at Zadi Design later in the years, so where I worked on the uh, Zadi Design Perodo uh, collections. It was a series of sports suit projects. This is a base layer for skiing and winter sports. Um, the pattern, which is 3D knitted in this case, was based on body mappings. So the fact that it's not only about the surface of the body, but it's also about uh, how much information can be included into a 3D model of the body that takes into account different things, such as the, the ability of the body to perspirate or the different type of heat or any other type of criteria that you want to include into that and how the patterns on the body can reflect and can uh, incorporate that type of information. So the patterns can be aesthetic, and, but they can also be 
performative in the sense that they reflect specific type of mappings. And uh, um, so the work on meeting went through on a number of projects. So you, you can see that it's pretty extensive experience onto that. And after working with the first two collections, two <laughs> collections, the first two classes on meal, I decided it was time to tackle directly the idea of the body and to work uh, at that scale and transfer some of the knowledge which uh, I uh, we developed throughout the years into a specific uh, advanced design class. So uh, let's get more to the focus of that. Um, I'm going to do something new. I sort of doing something new in terms of formation, something that uh, uh, reminds of the natural processes of uh, accretion. Accretion can be defined generally as the process of that there is a substrate and there is material which is being clustered onto that substrate, which are like particles coming together and uh, being uh, aggregated onto a base layer. In this case, it's hidden for the sake of the image. I want to here to focus a bit more on the pattern itself. So you can see that uh, this uh, Units of matter that come together can be represented as spheres or simple circular elements, which are then merged together into a more complex type of formation. So <clears throat> in terms of aesthetics and in terms of morphologies, that's how we're going to work in this case. I'm pretty excited because this was new also for me. This is something I haven't done before. So it was a great chance at this preparing this class to also do some research and uh, share it with you and uh, have uh, it would be great also to think of the class as a space to to enrich all of us with more research and more experiments on together uh, specifically in this set of images i was fascinated by a um, certain type of uh, uh, patterns such as uh, uh, butterfly wings or uh, <laughs> Rorschach maps, which is something different. Maybe I will talk a bit more about that in the class, but uh, that's what drove a bit the composition of these images, uh, which are in fact forms uh, that can become masks, for instance. So the class will give you the tools to work on the whole body. It is not focused only on the head. It, this type of workflow can be applied uh, everywhere. It can be applied to design something like uh, uh, onto the body, onto the, uh, the arms, the legs, wherever your imagination is driving you to go. I developed on the mask because that's more my type of focus. And I was quite intrigued by the, this idea of growth onto the head. So the, the head becomes the substrate for this type of accretion to happen. So uh, there is an idea of, of a parasite growing onto the human body and transforming its aesthetics. Um, I've been doing many iterations, so some of them are more similar, some of them are more different. I'm quite happy with the development because I think it's pretty easy to breed diversity once we get started with that. And it's a good compromise between uh, uh, advanced computational techniques and also ease to tweak and ease to manipulate the object that we're working with. So it's going to be the work at two levels, one level in which uh, it's pretty intuitive to understand how to uh, transform uh, the morphologies and adapt them according to more intuitive ideas. And then another level is more hardcore computational development that we're going to do the kangaroo that is going to give us that uh, type of balance that you see in the image, like the distances between spheres is controlled by, uh, by a, a computational simulation. Now let's get started and uh, uh, prepare for the class. So you, you will need to install a number of crossover plugins that we're going to use. Uh, if, to be honest with you, I'm sure that a few of these ones are mandatory, that like we will use for sure. And then the other ones, I'm still not 100% sure if we're going to go through, but it's really good to have them installed anyway. So also to be ready for things that we may improvise during the day following the Q&A but also uh, because they complement well the workflow. So the first one, and this is mandatory, is Kangaroo Physics by Daniel Piker. Uh, I suggest that you don't only install it, but you also go through the examples and uh, read the draft manual that comes with it. Uh, 
again, all these things are not strictly necessary. Like you will be able to follow the class even without that. But if you do that, you will get a deeper understanding of the topics we've been discussing and a better knowledge of that. So kangaroo physics is needed as it is dendro as well. Uh, dendro is something which I've been using also in other classes. We will use it again. So I suggest installing those with example for all of them. Then we may need uh, Tundra and uh, 4D Noise, which are um, plugins that control noise maps and uh, fields. And that's something which uh, uh, we may use as well to control the distributions of the accretion. Then other plugins that may be useful are Mesh Curvature. Mesh Edit, Lunchbox, Corsair Camera Control, and Weaverbird. Um, there is, in the description of the class, there is a list of them. So just make sure that you go through all of them, install them, and put a special focus on the first one. So the, the two fundamental ones are um, Kangaroo and Dendro. In terms of workflow, we, we work with mesh representation of the human body, and we will get into the details of that. Um, and then uh, the idea is that uh, we would work with a sphere packing algorithm that plays with uh, uh, basically distributing spheres onto a, a constrained mesh, a base mesh, like in this case, and uh, uh, rearranging them. Uh, uh, in order so that uh, they, uh, they, they they do a packing, so like uh, the distance between the spheres is no smaller than the smaller radius, so they, they don't overlap. That's the key idea. We may force the workflow also to have conditions of overlapping, but uh, um, however we want to see, the idea is that we would use a physics engines like Kangaroo to basically distribute surface spheres onto an object. So these are the base particles. We can call them particles. So these are the base units that will make, that will build up the, uh, uh, the accretion formation. Once we distribute the spheres, we, we will turn them into a single melted, so to speak, mesh with dendro. So the output will look in a way something like that, something in which all the elements are fused in a single one. Uh, that was a very quick sketch. And uh, the interesting thing is that uh, as we work with particles, it's also quite easy to uh, interact and edit them. Here you see a few sequences of my trials while preparing the class. So very different type of styles, something a bit more like the images that we saw before, a bit more aggressive, but can also go in very different direction with something which is like more symmetric, uh, more balanced in a way, make it something simpler also, why not? It can be done. Uh, or it can also be worked in a way in which we detach from the surface of the body, studying also how different uh, uh, base surfaces can be used. Um, it's good to remember also this, uh, 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 this workflow can also be applied um, to different case studies. So the object would stand on itself uh, even without the body. And that's something that can become, I don't know, something more architectural like a sculpture or a piece of furniture or something that may also become a, a, a interior separator or whatever. Like I think that uh, even if but it's not really your thing. There are, there are the premises in this workflow that uh, to apply to different case studies. So as the body acts as a substrate for this formation, anything can act as a substrate for this formation. So you can also give different type of meanings and, um, and yeah, achieving very different results and very different looks. One thing which may be interesting was let's switch off a few things here. Is that the interesting thing is that uh, the workflow works uh, 
uh, with spheres. So it's also easy to edit the spheres once you have them. So any uh, you, the, the, the interesting thing about this workflow is that it has a complex uh, uh, look in which you can have a control on the grains of them. So by deleting spheres, moving spheres and everything, which is something which we can do in a very simplified way, you can also achieve different type of uh, effects. All right, um, this introduction was meant to give you a basic understanding of the concepts of this workflow. Clearly, we will build much complexity on top of that. <laughs> we will expand on the how to work with mesh representation or other type of representations of the human body. We will expand on the basics of the physics engine, uh, refining the sphere packing by uh, uh, using uh, different type of uh, ways to like like tractors or field maps to influence uh, the effects of the packing we will expand quite a bit and that's the part which is very relevant to join with the computational part also on understanding what works and what doesn't work on the body so um, i will share you part of the process which i've been through for creating this uh, uh, outcomes and other ones and uh, uh, and discuss the design choices I made. So what looks good and what doesn't look good. That's a fundamental part of any design process. And uh, uh, so on that we will expand as well. We will uh, uh, we will discuss a few options for this workflow and um, how to expand it. And uh, I'm quite excited. It was uh, uh, something new, and uh, I'm keen to bring it to the class. And I hope to see you there.